It's November 6, 2024, and we've got Hurricane Rafael out here getting ready to slam into western portions of Cuba. Currently a Category 2 hurricane with 100 mile per hour winds. It is rapidly intensifying. You can see how the eye is becoming more defined there, but I wouldn't be surprised at all to see this make landfall in Cuba as a major Category 3 later tonight. The good news is, at least for the continental U.S., the tropical storm force and especially the hurricane force wind field within this storm is quite small, so there's only only a, uh, you know, 30, maybe 40 percent chance that some of the Florida Keys see some tropical storm force winds, even less than that up there towards Naples, Fort Myers, and Tampa. You guys won't notice much of anything at all from Rafael here, but of course the biggest impacts are going to be happening out here in Cuba where we're going to have the hurricane force winds, probably a lot of uh, storm surge as well, and some extreme flash flooding as a result of all the moisture that's going to come down along those mountains. But in Florida, our biggest problem and, and the thing that we're going to be dealing with down here is going to be the severe weather probabilities. We've got a slight chance in Key West, marginal risk in Naples for a tornado or two. This is driven by a 5% probability in Key West and a 2% probability in Naples. I wouldn't worry too much about it, but you know, on the outside of all of these hurricanes and tropical systems, we always have to look out for potential spin-up tornadoes and tropical tornadoes. So we're going to be watching this today, but it doesn't look like it's going to be a big time outbreak or anything like that. Just keep your guard up in Key West, especially, or any of the keys, and make sure you've got a way to receive warm warnings tonight as the storm goes through. Once again, it's going to make landfall this evening somewhere in western Cuba, and it is going to weaken a little bit, all right? So once it gets back out into the Gulf, especially once it gets close enough to really start interacting with the Keys, it'll likely be a Category 2 or maybe even a Category 1 hurricane again around 1 a.m. Thursday morning. 1 p.m. Thursday, it's going to start shifting a little bit to the west, and it's going to go right out into the middle of the Gulf of Mexico by late in the day on Friday and uh, early in the morning on Saturday. We don't expect to see the rapid and intensification to continue here because the waters are a lot cooler in the Gulf right now than they are in the Caribbean. So there's not as much fuel for the storm to work off of. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not like they're cold. There's enough warm uh, water out here to sustain a hurricane. But there's another thing that's happening that the storm has to deal with, and that's a ton of wind shear coming off of the mainland U.S. that the storm has to fight with. And it doesn't look like it's going to do very well with it. And that's why we expect by uh, 1 a.m. Sunday, uh, this is going to be downgraded to a tropical storm. Storm. Now, of course, that could change, but as of right now, this looks like our best bet on the uh, intensity of the storm as it gets closer to Texas and Louisiana. I don't think we have to be concerned at all at this point for a uh, Florida landfall uh, or even a Mississippi or Alabama landfall. Louisiana and Texas, you guys are the ones that we're watching here. There's even a chance, though, that we don't see a landfall at all. This thing could literally dissipate before it gets to the mainland U.S., and that's what we're going to hope for, obviously. Let's check out the forecast on the latest GFS model. There's our Raphael. Once again, a little bit weaker than what we see right now. About 1 a.m. This is when we might see a couple of uh, tropical tornadoes out there on the Keys. But look at what else is happening. All day today into tonight, some very heavy rain is going to be falling in Georgia, South Carolina, and the Panhandle of Florida. And this is associated with Raphael. So even though we're not going to see a landfall directly, we are going to see some negative impacts in the southeast as a result of Hurricane Raphael as it goes into the Gulf. This is going to be some flooding rains at times in Georgia, especially around uh, Augusta down to Macon. So you guys get ready for that. We're also going to have some lingering rainfall continuing to happen out here from West Virginia back through Kentucky and especially in the mid-Mississippi River Valley around Memphis down into portions of Mississippi and Arkansas. Uh, this will also have the capability of bringing about some flash flooding, not because of how heavy that rain is, but just because of how long it's been sticking around. And then today, this is a wild picture, right? We've got a hurricane in the Gulf and pretty much a blizzard going on back here in portions of Texas, New Mexico, Colorado, and Kansas, right here where Oklahoma, Texas, and New Mexico, and Colorado meet, we actually are probably going to see a very, very significant snowstorm as a result of this. Let me put this into motion. You can see how those blues don't really move that much. We've got heavy snow falling at least through November 8th here, so that's something that we're going to keep a very close eye on. Here's our hurricane out in the middle of the Gulf, once again, kind of maintaining strength. We had a 985 on the other side of um, Cuba as far as the millibars go in the low pressure system. Remember, the lower that number, the stronger the storm. GFS is showing a 981 as it gets into the middle of the Gulf. Notice how we don't have any rapid intensification. We're at 993 by the time we get to 10 a.m. on Saturday. So the thing is unwinding, mostly because we've got this big trough that might cause some more storms over here in the south central U.S., more snow around Denver on Saturday, and all of the blow off from that, all of the wind and the jet stream is going to be kind of going right towards that hurricane and wind shear, 
conflicting winds, especially in the upper levels of the atmosphere, are like kryptonite for hurricanes, okay? They cannot deal with it, and it looks like that's going to really do work on Raphael here, as the GFS shows almost a complete degradation of the storm, a complete dissipation of the storm as we go into Sunday and Monday. Some residual rainfall and some tropical moisture will be flung up into the eastern part of the United States, though. Heavy rain is going to be possible in Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and West Virginia, some places that really need it. It's going to be possible on a Sunday as a result of this, so we're thankful for that. And also notice how things are staying quite warm here. <laughs> we're going to stay in our warm pattern, especially in the east, as we go into the future. And look at that. The hurricane's gone, okay? The GFS says it's going to hit a wall here, and it's not going to come into the United States, and of course, that's what we're going to hope for here. So the most interesting thing on this map, if you live in the United States, is really not the hurricane. It's the residual moisture that's going to be causing rain out here, and then the big time snow on the backside of that storm system coming through the Rockies. And let me be clear, this is not going to be a high elevation storm specifically. This is also going to cause a lot of problems and some heavy snow down in the valleys. If you're in southern, southeastern Colorado, northeastern New Mexico, even the extreme western portions of the Texas Panhandle and uh, Oklahoma Panhandle, we are going to have some snow here over the next three days. Some places are going to get 30 inches of snow. And of course, up on the mountains, there's going to be some places that see maybe 40 to 60 inches of snow. So this is going to be a high impact snowstorm for some of our folks here in New Mexico and southern Colorado. The winter storm severity index over the next three days is lighting up over here near Denver as well. Albuquerque where we expect some moderate uh, impacts where we're going to have hazardous driving more than likely. But looky here in southern uh, Colorado and northeast New Mexico especially we expect extreme impacts through the next three days. Expect substantial disruptions to daily life. Extremely dangerous driving conditions are going to be possible. And of course, we might have infrastructure problems like power outages. So make sure you're prepared for this. It's going to be a big winter storm over here. Strong winds as well. Blizzard conditions are going to be possible. You guys have already been seeing it. It's going to continue at least through tomorrow night. And on the eastern side of that storm system, with a little help from Tropical Storm Raphael, we're going to have a lot of rain. This is not snow. <laughs> this is just regular rainfall. And as you can see, in a very short period of time over here, a lot of this is going to fall today. In Georgia and South Carolina, we could see three to maybe six six inches of rain in some places, and that will cause some flash flooding. And that's why we have a moderate risk of excessive rainfall from the uh, Weather Prediction Center for Aiken, South Carolina, Augusta, Georgia, Dublin, and Macon in Georgia, almost down to Albany as well. A slight risk extends from Sumter, South Carolina, back towards Dothan, Alabama. Watch those creeks and streams, okay, over the next couple of hours, even into the early morning hours tomorrow. We're going to have some flooding problems out here in Georgia, unfortunately. Now, here's what the rainfall totals could look like over the next seven days days. Of course, most of this is happening today. A lot of this is happening today and tomorrow. A lot of this is going to happen over the next seven days. So get ready for more rain in Oklahoma, Texas, some drought relieving rain uh, in the mid Mississippi River Valley up into the mid Atlantic. But, uh, you know, not much rain expected at all right along the East Coast, though. So from Baltimore down to Raleigh, uh, you know, there's going to be some rain, but nothing crazy. Same thing for you guys up farther north and east. There's going to be some wildfire relief, but not necessarily any anything to uh, write home about. Most of the rain is going to be locked in down here farther south. Speaking of wildfires, today and tomorrow also we've got to watch out for you guys in Southern California. There is an elevated risk there. Some strong winds coming on shore because of our next big system that's going to be bringing in a tremendous amount of rain to the Cascades and portions of the Pacific Northwest. This is also going to fall in, in a short period of time and could cause some flooding up here in Washington and Oregon and northwestern portions of California. Let's keep the forecast going, okay? The hurricane's going to disappear we're going to see the blow off, the rain, try to spread some love, <laughs> some moisture around the East Coast. It's not going to do a whole lot. We're going to see maybe a little bit of snow up here in Maine around 1 p.m. on Monday, but don't get used to the cold, okay? Another big ridge is coming through, and we are going to be much above average uh, for the most part as we go through the next week or so. Wednesday, November 13th, it's going to feel hot. You guys have already felt it. You know what I'm talking about. It was too daggone warm on trick-or-treat. It was too daggone warm on election day. It's just going to continue to feel that way as we go through the middle of November. Some really cold air, though, is going to sneak in behind this ridge, and we could be talking about some more snow in Montana, Idaho, and uh, places like Denver, Colorado as we go into Thursday and Friday on the GFS model here. But for the most part, I mean, things are really not active. We got another little system trying to come through maybe on Saturday, November 16th. 
16th. That might bring some snow up here to southern portions of Canada and Ontario, but mostly this is warm, okay? This is rain in the Great Lakes, maybe some isolated thunderstorms back towards Oklahoma City and the Red River area. Another big ridge is forming out there in the west, and honestly, this is a nice weather pattern as we go into November 18th. Very quiet, very warm. It's not going to feel like November 18th almost anywhere in the United States here, except for maybe in the extreme northern portion, especially up here in upstate New York. We might have to deal with some lake effect snow as the winds are going to be blowing off the lakes in this orientation. But honestly, we're so far out, it's too early to talk about lake effect snow. But yeah, things look really good, at least until we get to Thursday, November 21st. And that's when the GFS starts showing these big systems again, where we could be talking about severe weather and maybe some significant snow on the backside. So we're really front loaded on our weather forecast. Everything that's happening is, is really happening today and tomorrow and, and maybe the next day. Beyond that, things look like they're calming down a little bit, but of course that could change. And if anything does change, you'll hear it here first. Here's the six to 10 day climate prediction center outlook. And of course, warm in the east, cool in the west. Nothing's changed here. <laughs> uh, get used to it, at least through the middle of November. Uh, there will be a big pattern change. I don't know when that's going to happen, but this is certainly unusual for November. Everything that we're talking about, the, the hurricane activity is not unheard of, but uh, unusual. Uh, and then also uh, the just the massive amount of warmth here on the eastern side of the country. But whenever that snow starts falling, okay, it's going to happen. December, January through February and March, we're going to have some snowstorms this year. And east of the Rocky Mountains, of course, whenever we have a widespread winter storm that impacts a lot of people, we are going to do some snow streams, some blizzard streams this year. Uh, so make sure you tune in for those. And if you live somewhere where you can measure snow, we've got the best snow measuring devices over on shopryanhall.com. I've got a link in the description to these things. We've got the Yala meter, okay? We've got a bunch of different color options, a bunch of different sizes. You can get them up to 42 inches, I think. And this is just a really fun way that we all come together during the winter and send in snow reports with these. And at the end of the stream, we'll pick somebody that sent in a snow report and we just give you a thousand bucks. It's very fun. It's very light compared to the hurricane and tornado coverage. And I'm so looking forward to it. And if you want to help us fund our operation so that we can continue continue to, you know, do the storm chasing thing and the weather probes and all of the really expensive stuff that goes into our live streams in tornado and hurricane season. The best way to do that is going over to shopryanhall.com and buying something like a very awesome snow measurement device, a Yala meter. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.